I need you to say this with me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We appreciate you, Jesus. We give you glory, Jesus. Now, I want you to do this with me. Jesus, we bless this land. Jesus, we bless the dirt we walk on. We bless the air we breathe. We bless the water we drink. We bless our husbands and our wives. We bless our children and our grandchildren. And we refute the power of the demon. And we call peace to this land. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Holy Ghost. Yeah, thank y'all. Have a seat. Um. Thank y'all. That was awesome, everybody. Y'all did great, of course. Bless y'all. Yeah. <clears throat> I know there's. I know some of y'all don't understand uh, because it seems like there's not enough trinkets down here to pray for. If you want something prayed for, please come put it up here, and we will pray. We're getting thousands of miracles with this stuff. Uh, all over the world, I get to travel now, and uh, it's uh, going quite well, actually. This Hogan Brink, let me have that stuff. It, um, you, don't, you don't have to uh, become a coffee shop just because we're putting trinkets up here. <laughs> well, you're going to anyway, so y'all get it out of your system. Jesus. Hello. 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 Oh, uh, now it's better. Okay. okay. All right. Hello. Bless you. You good? So am I. Bless you, baby. Shakalaba. Jesus. Holy. Holy. Well, okay, this is good. Now, let, let me tell you all a story, if I can have your attention. If not, I'll go to Nando's and let y'all do this. Because <clears throat> Nando's has got good chicken. I mean, if you like chicken, and I do, so. Holy Ghost, thank y'all. I was over in the United States preaching in the state of Virginia. Uh, it's close to Washington, D.C. over there somewhere. And um, there was, we was doing this here. And, and this uh, young woman comes up and uh, she's carrying on about her husband dying and so forth. And um, she said, I want your handkerchief. You know, it's my handkerchief. It's in my pocket. And uh, I said, I'm not going to give you my handkerchief. So she bypassed me and went to Mrs. Hogan. You want to stand up and say hi or something? <laughs> you all right? You want to say something? You want to say nothing? Thank you. Holy Ghost. That, that's my... That's my wife. <laughs> 47 years. <laughs> That's a big deal. And so the lady goes to my wife, right? And she says, Mr. Hogan, I, you know, cry, cry. You know, I want my way. He won't let me have my way. <clears throat> so Ms. Hogan comes over and says, look. Give the lady the handkerchief. I'll buy you a dozen. I said, no deal. She said, I'll buy you two dozen. 
deal. <laughs> I think that's fair trade, don't you? A used handkerchief for two dozen? That sounds like a good deal. <laughs> so we prayed over it, it, and her husband was in this, uh, what do you call that place where, you're, where they put you and they, you can't go see them? I see. What does that mean? I see. Intensive care. I don't do hospitals, so I don't know y'all's terminology. Most Christians know more about the hospital than non-believers do. Spend most of their time and money in the hospital. So, that was a rebuke. <coughs> so, <coughs> you go, yeah, that's right. No, no it ain't okay. <coughs> and so, Ms. Hogan gave her my handkerchief and the lady left. And I, I was over. You know, I lost my handkerchief. But this year, I was back over there uh, in uh, Virginia. And it, it was, the place was packed out. It was just, you couldn't move. It was so many people. And fire of God was banging, and it was nice. I was enjoying myself. And this fellow walks up, big old guy. My goodness. And this woman, and that, they're sitting there. And he says, look here, I need to talk to you. And I ignored him because I, hopefully it was a good thing he wanted to talk about. <clears throat> but in case it wasn't, I was acting like I couldn't hear him. <laughs> he said, I need to talk to you, Brother David. I have something for you. I said, oh, okay, I'll talk to you then. It was the fella that was in intensive care. He was on life support, and they were running out of insurance money. So that means you got to pull the plug on those machines. That means he's dead, Right. But the, the wife goes rolling up in there with my handkerchief, spread it out, threw it on top of the guy. And as soon as the handkerchief hit the fella, he came out of the coma. Yeah. That's a good thing. Just a, just a regular old made in China handkerchief. Everything in the United States is made in China. Except for Miss Hogan, she's not. <laughs> she's, she's made in the USA. <laughs> so, well, me too. I was too. So, so I'm looking at this guy, and he, he had my handkerchief in his hand, and it was washed and ironed and folded and ironed. He said, I want to give it back to you. I said, I got, a, I got two dozen handkerchiefs out of this. <laughs> And I got my original one back. That's a pretty good deal, don't you think? <laughs> uh, but the best thing about it, I suppose, is the fellow got healed. <laughs> it was amazing, y'all. He had four different uh, incurables. And he, he was not supposed to recover from one of them. But all four of those things left. And he was left whole and healed. Isn't that awesome? That's awesome, huh? Yeah. Woohoo! Holy Ghost. Now, you, you can see, I, I'm talking, I want you to recognize that since the last time I was here, I'm still doing all right. I've been around the planet two and a half times since I've seen y'all. 300,000 kilometers. Really? That's a long way. Boy, my body feels like it, you know? But I'll be all right. Eventually. <laughs> Every continent has opened up. There are miracles, signs and wonders in every continent. I know you're hearing the negative, and I know you're believing the negative, and I know you're hiding from the negative, and I know you're afraid. Well, I'm not. I've decided I'm not going to be. 
I've decided I'm going to be filled with the Holy Ghost and joy. That, that's, a, that's a personal decision. And uh, Ms. Hogan is with me, right? Tell them yes, whether you are or not. <laughs> she is. And our marriage is doing good. Our kids are doing good. Our work in Mexico is growing. So I really don't know what to say to you. Uh, uh, you should get a life, I guess. <laughs> Jesus is king. It's awesome. I, I get to see all these great miracles, and it's pretty fun, to tell you the truth. And because uh, I don't guess lots of people get to see some of the stuff I get to see. But yesterday, I was not successful. I want to repent to you. Uh, there was a young man uh, fell off a cliff. Um, some of y'all probably heard about it. Uh, worked for YWAM, uh, killed him. And I got to go yesterday morning, uh, Brother Hink and myself, Brother Bo and Brother Ethan, we went and they let us in the morgue and they let us pray. And there was some other people from YWAM there as well, and Iris Ministries. And um, it was like seven or eight of us, right? And, and I apologize to you, I didn't get that boy. I wanted him here uh, tonight, but I was not successful. I want you to understand when I say I'm not successful, uh, what that means. That means I was obedient. That means I tried to do what I'm telling you is the right thing to do. Do you understand? Yeah. Do, you see, do you see it doesn't have any control on me? You see I'm all right, right? Yeah. I really, of course, and the hardest part to me was I had to call the mom and dad and tell them that I was not successful. Oh, that's the hardest part. But I, was, I did it. You saw me do it. And I, w I want you to know that we don't get everything we want. I don't. But it doesn't stop what the word is and the power of it to us. Because I don't get everything doesn't mean God don't love me. It means I'm a good son because I keep trying anyway. Hello? I said Hello? All right, so I need you to turn over to Psalms 138. I got a couple of pictures we're going to show y'all. Uh, Brother Bo's going to describe a miracle. Is that all right? Uh, but first, I want to read a couple of verses to you so you can feel spiritual and churchy and everything, and, you, and your little religious twit devils can be pacified that, 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 that we went to church. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you got to understand, I do this every day. You see how relaxed I am. I'm not intimidated. I'm not afraid. I know you're a powerful people and everything. And I maybe should be nervous. I'm just not. I come here to bless you and your land. You understand that? That's how it's going to be. Jesus. <laughs> Holy Ghost and fire. I, I know that, I know that I really should be nervous, but I just, I don't know, I lost it somewhere. I've been traveling so much. Uh, somebody failed to bring me the bag that had all the trouble stuff in it, and I didn't get my luggage. So it got lost. So I'm doing all right without the worry and the doubt and the fear and the unbelief. I'm doing quite well with the love and the mercy and the grace and the fresh anointing of God's power. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. So y'all, you, uh, you prophets know where we're going, right? This is my problem with you prophets. You don't know where we're going. If you was a prophet, you would. So let's turn over to Psalms 138, please. Holy Ghost. Psalms 138. Holy Ghost. Shalakata Baba. You know, you know my family tonight here, but daytime in the other some of the other continents. You know, my family's preaching today in four continents. And that's a good that's a good thing, isn't it? Wow. 
grandkids, kids, and us who are stretched out over four continents preaching that Jesus is king. <laughs> you ain't never met anybody like that, I bet you. <laughs> Psalms 138, y'all there? I will confess and praise you, O oh God. So let's do that. Just lift your hand up or two or whatever, ever, how many you have. And just confess Jesus is Lord. Go right ahead. Speak to the air. Speak to the principalities, powers, and governing spirits. I confess you, Jesus is Lord. While it is called today, I will bless the Lord. With my whole heart. Say it, come on. I will bless you, God, with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praises. Say it. See, because when you, when you go down through the Or Tambo uh, airport and you're worshiping God and speaking in tongues and all the people are mad at you, that's gods that are mad at you. When you go out here in the, in the villages, we was just in the Transkai and, and uh, spent several days out there. And, and, and I'll tell you, I like fighting them. What's the name of them witches? Sangomas. <laughs> Man, that, that was, I was, I was walked in this house, right? We're going to pray for this person that's got uh, something wrong with their legs. And, uh, and I walk in there, and there's one of those people in there painted all white and everything. And I thought, dude, what, I wonder why she painted herself white like that. <laughs> and it turns out she's this scary uh, witch thing that'll tote your kid off and hold it underwater hostage till you do whatever they, whatever they say, which I'm not going to submit. And I'm not bluffing, so there's going to be a fight. And so, it's a true statement. I got witnesses here. And, and we, <laughs> I'm telling you, it was so much fun. Because I looked over there at this witch, right? Sangoma demon. Is that clear enough or should I get a little bit more descriptive? <laughs> I really feel like I might order. Demon from hell. And I look over there and that thing's just looking at me, right? And I'm going, I know to her I'm the devil. I know that. And to me, she's the devil. So we have a conflict going. And one of us is wrong. It's her. <laughs> so I told her, I said, look at me, baby. Look at me. You see that I'm not afraid. And when I said that to her, what happened next, Brother Hink? She starts trembling. And I go, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then we get up to pray for the grandma with the whatever wrong with her leg thing, can't walk thing. And we're going over there, we're praying for these people. And I couldn't wait to get to that painted up demon thing. And I get over there and I touch that Sangoma demon in the head. And you ought to have seen the thing bite the dirt and start screaming. It was wonderful. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? It is the will of God to destroy the work of the demon on their turf. That's their land. And when my foot got on it, whose land did it become? Moi. Jesus said, wherever you put your foot, whose land is it? It's the son of God's land. It doesn't belong to the demon anymore. I need you to understand that. Jesus is king. Jesus is king. It was pretty fun. We ended up with close to 100 conversions. Guy with a, uh, what's that thing called? A, a stroke. First night, they brought him in there. Second night, he walked in, barely moving. 
Third night he walked in, you know, still hobbling. But the fourth night, uh, we was up there. These numbers might be off by one. I don't know. But it was a bunch of nights in a row. But then all of a sudden, I'm sitting up there and I'm dancing with this little kid. There's this little bitty old kid and I'm dancing with this little kid. The next thing I know, I look over there and the stroke guy is up dancing with us. It's true. It's true. Got his cane in the air and he's just dancing with us. That's what you need. Say it. I need that. Say it. I need that. Say it. But, but out of all the things we did out there, the lady, the crippled lady was my favorite. She was, she was, uh, I don't know what was wrong with her. I don't have a clue what the name of that devil was, had her, but she couldn't walk and she was weak and she couldn't stand up and she was days and days in the, in the bed and they brought her to service and all of a sudden she, could, she received, it says it in, in somewhere in Acts, Bo, help me out, where does it say in Acts that the guy received uh, strength in his legs. Is that four or five? Where is that? Three? Three, four, four. Uh, this guy was at the temple and when Peter touched him, the strength went into his ankles. That's what happened to this lady, isn't it? Isn't it? You saw it. You saw it, boys. And then I, I went over there to her and I told her, I said, listen to me. I know that your mind believes the weakness. My mind don't believe the weakness. My mind believes the strength. His name is Jesus. And it's more and more strength going to pour into you. And you ought to have seen her every time she came. She was stronger and stronger. And then all of a sudden, you know that thing they do where, you, where they go like a train around and everybody's moving every way that I can't? <laughs> they, they were up there doing their thing. And this woman that's crippled, all of a sudden she's in the thing and she's moving just like them and with them and healed. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> this is who we are. Say it. This is who we are. This is who I am. Say it. Shalabaka Taba. There's been a lot happened to me personally since I've seen y'all. It's been close to two years, right? Within a week of here, two years ago I was here. And there's been so much growth in the fire of God, in the power and the anointing, the fresh oil, the fresh anointing of God is on us. And I need you to want that. I don't need you to be satisfied. I don't need you. I don't need you to be content. I don't need you to be okay. I need you to be hungry for more. Come on up, Brother Bo. Let me, while I, I'm fixing to go past it, I feel it. So you, would you throw up the one with the baby, the picture with the baby, please? Who's running that? Yeah, that's it. What's your name? Who's running that picture thing? Huffy. Huffy? Huffy. Is that close? That's Huffy? Okay. It's okay? Huffy? Huffy. I, don't, I won't remember that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm David Hoffy. <laughs> I want you to look at this baby in this picture because it's just a normal village scene, but it's not normal at all. Here, Brother Bo, tell him. Hallelujah. Jesus bless y'all. Uh, that baby is awesome. It's a village where me and my family, we started going about eight months ago. They didn't have any gospel, and through a series of events, we ended up there, and this family turned to God. And so we started going every week, every two weeks, sitting down and sharing Jesus with them, teaching them how to walk with God. And we went to do a visit with them uh, just a few months ago, maybe three or four months ago. I don't remember exactly now, but we went to go do a visit with them, and my wife went into the kitchen with the, kitchen with the sister, the woman you see holding the baby. And while they were in the kitchen making some food for everybody to eat, she said, my nephew, she told my wife, my nephew's going to come to church today. And my wife said, well, that's awesome. And she's like, yeah, he came the other night and he came to my gate. It was late and he called me at the gate. He said, Tia, Tia, aunt, aunt. 
And so she recognized his voice, so she got out of bed, opened the door, and he was standing at the gate, and he had that baby in his arms. Uh, she told my wife, I've invited him to come to church to these visits, and he never would come. He's never been interested in Jesus. He hadn't wanted anything to do with the gospel since we've given our hearts to God. But he's standing at my gate, and he's saying, help me. And so I walk out to the gate, and I ask him what's wrong, and he said, my baby's daddy quit breathing 30 minutes ago. The baby's four months old, and she took the baby from his arms and said, it's okay, come in the house with me, son. And she walked into the house with him, and she had that baby in her arm, dead. She said the baby was already cold and stiff, and she just started asking Jesus to help him. She's <laughs> brand new. And, and I don't know how long she prayed exactly, but she said, we just started asking Jesus to help. And after a while, that baby just sucked in air and came back to life in her arms. And she's telling my wife this. It's just happened like the day or two days, three days, something like that before we came. And she told my wife, he's going to come today and they're going to present their baby because they don't know what to do. <laughs> but they've decided they, they, they want to walk with, with Jesus. And so they, a few minutes later, my wife comes out and she said, did the brother tell you what happened? I was like, no. And so she tells me this story. And, and as she's finishing the story, the daddy, the mama, they're young, walk in with this lively baby alive, four-month-old boy. And, you know, that, that is awesome. I'm listening to this, and, you know, you can't do nothing but, but cry because it's so amazing. But what's, what was really amazing for me, outside of the baby being given life when it was dead, is that they didn't call me in the middle of the night. They're eight months old. That woman doesn't even know how to read, I don't think. She's never been to school. She probably can't quote you a Bible verse. She probably can't sing half the songs we sing when we come to church. But that had nothing to do with the power of God going through her, giving life to that baby. And I'm, before I give the mic back, I've been reading Isaiah, and there's, there's these verses in, in Isaiah 51, and it, and it says that the ransomed of Israel shall return. And they shall return with singing and crowned with everlasting joy. But the next part says, they shall obtain joy and gladness. And sorrow shall go far from them. You know, we go into the village and we're teaching them Jesus. And, and we're not really going in trying to teach them our 13 doctrinal beliefs. We go in and teach them that there is a living God. And that you can obtain joy and gladness from him. And she believed that. And she believed after eight months of walking with God and not knowing how to read the Bible, she still had the faith in her heart to believe that God was bowed down from heaven listening to her voice. And she obtained joy and gladness and sorrow and sorrow and went far away from that family. Y'all be blessed. That is the same ability that's within every one of us. Thank you. Thank you. Woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> the dead are raised in your generation. The dead are raised in your generation. The dead are raised in your generation. Holy Ghost, say it. I will confess, say it. The Lord with my whole heart. I will praise him. Because look, that boy, that boy that lost the baby, the, the nephew, right? He had it all together. He had a job. He had his... He had his life organized and planned. He don't need God. Everything's working for him until the baby quit breathing. And you're going to find somebody that believes. You understand that? <laughs> I 
I'm clean across over there in the Stellenbosch. Did I say that right? That was right? Two. And all of a sudden, I come in. I was up on that big mountain over there. What's the name of that thing? Stellenbosch Mountain. I went up there on the top, and I was enjoying y'all's beauty. It's all around. And I was just talking about to the Holy Ghost. I get off the thing, and these folks here tell me there's been an accident, with, and somebody's asked you to go and pray. See, what, what you need to understand is every one of you saw it on the news, but your phone didn't ring. Now, I'm not against you at all. But your phone should ring. You should be so much a Christian <laughs> that people know who to call. You should be so radically sold out, worshiping and praising. You should be the confessor. You should be the one that all you do is walk. Shakalababa. You make everybody nervous and they leave you. They, they, <laughs> you go in the, in the Spar's grocery store Pushing your little, y'all call them Charlie, what do y'all call them? Thing, and we go you're shopping and you're speaking in tongues and everybody clears the aisle for you because, <laughs> because you're a son of God. And then you get up there to the checkout thing. What do y'all call it? Checkout, what do you call it? What do you call it? <laughs> like T I L L? <laughs> Teal? Are you serious? Well, I didn't know that. Oh. So I get up to the till. <laughs> and you're speaking in tongues, and you ought to see how considerate the people are to a son of God. <laughs> you're worshiping and confessing Jesus, and they move right out of your way and let you get your stuff paid for. <laughs> They're so very considerate. <laughs> See, in your world, they think you're loony. That's what you think. Not in my world. In my world, boy, that's awesome of them to recognize the power of God in us and let us go ahead and have our turn. That's pretty nice, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> Holy Ghost. But I need you to amp it up. I need you to get a new chip. I need you to get a, a new download. I need an upgrade on you. I need you... I do. I'm not mad at you. You see me, I'm not mad. There's absolutely nothing for me to be mad about. Dude, we're raising the dead, the blind see, the lame walk. Miss Hogan loves me, and Jesus is king. I mean, what else could there be? But I need you to understand when there's calamity, people need to know to call you. Do you understand? That's important. That's important because when I found out my daughter-in-law, they're up at my son's up, Jody, remember he was here last time. Uh, they're up in Europe, in Germany, preaching. And uh, my daughter-in-law sent my wife a thing about uh, the boy. And she said, tell Brother David it's this missionary that works with Miss Heidi. Baker. And so I immediately called uh, some people I know that uh, uh, it's high up in their thing. I said, look, here is this true statement. And they go, yes, it is. It, here's, the, here's the return. David, we need you. We need you now. See, that's who you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be the one that people can count on in calamity. You, you are supposed to be confessing the Lord your God with your whole heart at such a rate that it irritates every devil for miles. <laughs> and, the, and the people, you make them nervous when you come around because you're unpredictable. Because people like what's called status quo. But I like the part where you don't even know which button to hit because you're so nervous. 
I like that part. So I bless you. Do you understand me? I need you to upgrade. I need you to let that great Holy Ghost run through your family. I need the fire of God burning this land. And it's you God wants to use. Do you hear me? You understand I'm not rebuking you, but I am. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm telling you I'm right about this. Because I go into these lands like we was just in uh, India. I was there for close to two months. And they're killing Christians there all over the place. And they, they sent me, my government, as soon as I bought the ticket, my government sent me a, a thing from the State Department telling me not to go. Because they know I'm going to get killed. And they don't want to be responsible. You understand that? And then the Indian government sends me a, a thing from their State Department saying, you know, it's hard times, it's this, it's that, it's dangerous. And, and so I tell my wife, I said, look here, we prayed and fasted over this, but it seems like the governments have different ideas than we do. And Ms. Hogan said one thing to me. She said, didn't Jesus tell you to go and preach the gospel? I said, yes, he did. She said, then go. That's her. Now, this little grandma that don't say nothing. <laughs> And I want you to know it, I felt nervous. I felt like a target. Because you, you want to know why I'm a target? Because I'm not ashamed. And I'm not bluffing. And we went up there by the Chinese border and things went well for us. There's miracles all over the place. And then we went down into the southeastern state, one of the provinces where they're killing Christians by the dozens and dozens. They're burning the people like they light this place on fire uh, with everybody in it and kill all the Christians. That's what they're doing. Say, I don't like that. Say it. <laughs> now act like you don't like it and ask God for mercy. Let's go. Come on. Mercy, Holy Ghost. Mercy for the Christians in India. Say it right out of your mouth. In Jesus' name, we ask you to spare our lives, their lives. In Jesus' name. And y'all, I went there and, and we was, uh, I was warned about certain, certain routings uh, of the, 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 the public airline routings, but I didn't know, I had no idea, you know I don't know. I'm an Americano that lives in Mexico. I don't know India. But the route we took was the safe route that the people take. Somehow God spoke to our travel agent and got us a route through India it was not taken by the modern Christian world. Uh, it's not the vacation route. And I got into this troubled area, uh, and I was promised death. Um, what I don't want to do is, call, because of my presence, make somebody else get killed. But I have to see if you have, if your God has the power to kill me. I just, I just am obligated. <laughs> to see if your dead gum son Goma devil is bigger than my holy God. I am just obligated to see that. That's as close as I can get to the line without crossing because I really want to cross that line, man. <laughs> you see how I'm lit up? I'm an old guy. Look at me. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm on fire. You got to understand. So you don't know this. Well, I'm going to go ahead and tell you just because I'm going to be nice. Because Miss Hogan's here, I'll be nice. <laughs> Uh, 
I'm training for my 35th marathon in the last five years. That ain't bad for an old guy, is it? Come on, mercy. Y'all understand we got this. You, you see me? I believe we have this. You see that, right? I believe we can do this. Regardless of the obstacles, the circumstances, the odds, Jesus is for me. I get to this place. I'm not going to name it because it's probably being taped, maybe even being uh, streamed. I don't know. Probably. And <clears throat> I walk in this building. There's 3,000 pastors there from every province in, Mex in uh, uh, India. Do you understand the opportunity I have to touch a lot of India is, is in that room. But yet they, they, they promised us that they're going to attack us and kill us. So I get up there on that platform and I'm, I'm, they, I'm waiting my turn just like I was a while ago and I get up and do my, my turn. As soon as I take the microphone, this large entourage of Hindus come in the back. And I looked over at my boys. I told them, we're not going to make it out of here. It was a bunch of them. They come rolling up there. They're all dressed in their ceremonial things. They got colors in their hair and all over them. And, they, and the one guy never stopped. He just rolled up on the platform. And I'm just watching him. He rolled up right to me. And he looks me right in the face. He says, I'm a Hindu. I said, hello. I'm a son of God. And he knelt down on his knees. And I thought, what? So I knelt down with him. <laughs> and, and I put my hand out. He put his hand out. The fellow was a minister of parliament. He was the minister of parliament that runs religious affairs in India. And I didn't know that, of course. And he says, I want you to know I'm the fellow that signed the papers for these meetings to happen. I'm the guy that signed for your protection. As long as you're here, I will protect you. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> and he's supposed to be my enemy. He said, my wife is a Christian and I'm not. And we're having this discussion in front of 3,000 pastors. He said, I signed off on these meetings and I'm going to protect you. He said, but what I need you to do is put your hands on me and pray for me. It's amazing, huh? I, I, I find that pretty significant. Your God is awesome. And I laid my hands on this fellow, and when I did, the place roared. I mean, because it's illegal for me. I'm an infidel. I can't touch Hindus. I can't touch Buddhists. And I can't touch Muslims. But when I go around them, they want me to pray for them. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I, th I think that's significant. Your God needs to be praised. Because you believe in the fear of the demon more than you believe in the word of the Father. He said, I will be with you forever. And he is. He's, I've been testing that out. It works. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to Psalms 138. Y'all there? Oh, a little side note to that. Uh, since we had those meetings, uh, oh, I almost named it. I, can't, I don't want to name it. 
Uh, they sent me a WhatsApp on his phone I got right here. And it, uh, it says, Brother David, thank you for coming. The fire of God has hit our part of India. And, and since in the, it was 39, it wasn't quite 40 days since the meetings, it was right at 37,000 converts. Isn't that awesome? Come on. Boy, that's a big deal. And they say, we don't even have a number on the amount of miracles. There's just by the tens of thousands. So I need you to want this. It's a new day. It's a new fresh fire. Jesus is king. Look at me. I'm enthused. I'm blessed. I, I preach every day of my life. I try to raise the dead, heal the sick. Every day we do this. Do you understand? It's very important you understand that Jesus is king. (laughs) Verse 2. Yay, I made it to verse (laughs) 2. Psalms 138, verse 2. I will worship. Say it. Say it again. Say it again. I I will worship. I will worship. I'm not ashamed. I'm not afraid. Say it. I bless the Lord Holy Ghost. I worship His power, His goodness, His mercy. Say it. Holy, holy. Come on. Worship God with me. Come on. Worship Him. No shame, no fear, no regret. Holy. 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 Shola katabaraba shataraba. Thank you, God the Father. See, some of you holy people in here, you theologians are mad at me because I'm speaking in tongues in an open assembly. <laughs> And I'm not giving and I'm not giving a flying flip about an interpretation. So that's got you angry with me. But you're not gonna stop me from worshiping God. You can put down five hundred laws, write them on every wall. I'm still gonna worship Jesus. Somebody has to be the one that's the confessor. It must be me. Shakala Baba. Holy Ghost. You see how much life's in me? You can see it. I know you can see it. It's the fire of the gospel. Holy Ghost. I'm working in 16 war zones now. It's scary. Oh my God. Because they're mean. They're spitting me. But I'm not. Problem with me is I'm right. <laughs> and when you think you're right, it gives you courage. When you think you're right, it gives you confidence. And then when things start rolling your way, it really helps your confidence. Especially if a minister of parliament comes rolling in where you think you're going to die. And instead of him pulling out an AK-47 and cutting you in two, he gets on his knees and wants you to lay hands on him. That's significant. Yeah. <laughs> Holy Ghost, I need you to be encouraged. I need you to lose this mammon, lust crazed idea that enough money will make you okay. Enough money will make you a bigger target. That's all enough money does. <laughs> you just have to build a different fence and put a dog in there and with more electricity and, and build your prison a little more secure so that you can't get out, but they can't get in. Oops. I prefer my freedom. 
So where was we? Let me worship. Oh, let's worship it. I will worship. Let's do it again. He said so. Holy, 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 holy. We can do this, y'all. Y'all, you see me, right? Look, the other day I was up at Kruger, y'all's wonderful, amazing thing. I don't know what y'all call it. National Park. And I was, I was begging God not to get eaten by a lion. <laughs> but I really needed a story, right? Because you can't go to one of these places without getting at least an elephant attack or something <laughs> to make it interesting. Well, we found this big male thing chasing this woman. And boy, you should never get involved between a male lion and his woman. They get cranky. Look, this thing attacked us. I'm in an open vehicle. You know, I'm a tourist. <laughs> That's not going to go good for y'all if a tourist gets eat by a lion. <laughs> and this thing, I don't know, as soon as we drove up, the yellow eyes, they saw us. I, there was eight vehicles there, and he chose us. <laughs> And I started feeling for my, I have this uh, seven inch stainless 44 Magnum cannon I shoot. And I started feeling for it, but it ain't there because y'all wouldn't let me bring it. <laughs> Americans can't have any toys. <laughs> Especially in Kruger. <laughs> Dude, I shot a gun in Kruger, I never would get out of jail. <clears throat> but the problem with that is simple. That line, uh, mock attacked us twice, and the third time, it was on. That thing came uh, about from here to that stand there. And he's throwing dirt, and he's showing them big old teeth, and he's cussing. The, I mean, he was bad cussing us. <laughs> I can't speak line, but I can speak that. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought I have my granddaughters there I got four of my granddaughters in this thing and all I got is this stupid little old Leatherman here so I, I, I'm sitting there watching him because I see what he wants he wants something to eat <laughs> I pull out this Leatherman got a three and a half inch blade on it <laughs> His claws are bigger than my knife is. <laughs> but I told myself, self, you got to sacrifice for them grandbabies. <laughs> so I said to heaven, heaven, please stop that lion. Because he's going to eat me and I'm going to have to let him. Because he can't have my babies. <laughs> and all of a sudden he stopped. And he ran back over here behind that thorn tree and was looking at us. And I told the people, crank this thing and let's go. <laughs> but I got it on video. Wait till you see it. It's real. Oh, my God. It's scary. But let me tell you, your God, I really appreciate y'all's Kruger. Thank God. Yay, God. But it was scary. It was bona fide. <laughs> <laughs> Say it, I will praise the Lord. Say it. I will praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord. I will worship you, God. Because you are holy. Everybody always tells me, dude, why don't you calm down? What, what is the reason for so much intensity? And when people ask me, I, I look at them. I need, to, I need to distance myself from this human because... Hell's fixing to eat them, and I don't want to get eat. You need to worship. I need you to worship. I need you to worship. I need you to worship Jesus. All the time. All the time. You know how awesome it felt when I knelt down with that minister, and he touched me on my shoulder. 
I personally am going to protect you. Do you know how awesome that feels? This is my enemy. Do you understand what I said to you? And he is set up to protect us. That is a substantial move of God. Because he let the word of God go forth. And because of that, tens of thousands of people are saved. Miracles are flowing. And it's not stopping. It's just, it's a row. It's some sort of a energy was released and the power of God is performing. Do you hear me? Now you say it. I want that. Say it. I want that energy. Say it. In the name of Jesus. I want that energy. Donkey. Holy Ghost. I will praise towards your holy temple and I will worship your name. Let, let me say this to you. For your loving kindness. A while ago, they were singing these songs about the loving kindness of God. And I knew I was going to quote this verse. It's amazing how I didn't say a word to these folks. And they didn't say a word to me. But yet we complimentary to each other. Do you, do you get it? God wants you to walk in his loving kindness. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Father. Do you hear me? And I know most of us choose the bitter pill, the anger, the ferocity, the violence. But listen to me. I am the guy of violence. I used to carry two pistols and a hog leg knife. And I would shoot you. Do you hear me? But heaven came and changed me. It was love and kindness that did that. Do you understand? And now I walk around the planet and go to these war zones and do these things and my enemies roll up in there and they tell me we're protecting you. I was in a service uh, a while back in one of our churches in Mexico and it was raining really hard. Monsoon season was there and it was rough and there wasn't very many people came. It was only a few hundred people showed up. And one of my brothers comes up and tells me, you, you know, they're coming for you today. This is one of my pastors. I said, who's coming for me? He said, the, well, I can't say the name. The, uh, the bad guys. That's close enough. The bad guys are coming for you. I said, why? Why did you tell me and why am I here if you know they're coming? Well, Brother David, we don't believe they can take you. Well, can, don't I get that decision? <laughs> Evidently not. And look, y'all, we're there and all of a sudden, just right out of the woods, the jungle, here they come filing out, about 25 of them, and they're there, and they are bad. These people are who is being hunted by everyone. And they come up in there, and they, they, I didn't know why they wanted me, but they rolled, uh, the captain, the uh, com uh, commandante of these people, roll up on me and tell me, you're David, right? I said, yes, I am. We've been hunting you. I said, present. <laughs> I said, you boys hungry? Because what Jesus say in Matthew 5, does anybody ever read their Bible? Love your enemies. Do good to those that curse you and hate you. Bless those that want to kill you. Is that what your book says? So that's what, that's what we think is the right thing to do, especially because it's in red letters. That means Jesus said it in some Bibles. My Bible. And so... They said, yes, we're hungry. Now, these boys have been running from every law enforcement agency, uh, military. Uh, they're bad guys. You ought to have seen those guys eat. They were starving. We fed our enemies. And, and you know, sitting in this environment where y'all supposed to be Christians, everybody goes, yes, praise the Lord. <laughs> That's a different story when you're in a village and they come rolling up on you. You hear me? 
And so we fed these guys and we went ahead and did church and we were nervous and it wasn't a very long song service and it wasn't very long preaching service. And, and then finally, what do you want? And the guy says, David, I was told that your God can do anything. I said, you was told correct, sir. And then he produced this baby and this baby is sick. I said, is this your son? Yes, it is. I said, okay, let me, can I have the baby? As soon as I have the baby, you understand I am protected, right? They're not going to attack me when I got that baby. <laughs> because what the rest of the army don't want is that mama, because she's standing there, she's just as mean as they are. So I'm protected. And I get to pray for this baby. Listen, all of them got born again. Amen. Holy, holy. That's for me, not you. <laughs> Unless you want one, and then I'll get another. You don't want one? You sure? Well, excuse me. Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not embarrassed. I apologize. Uh, my wife gets embarrassed. Her face turns red. And, and I ask her all the time, what's wrong with you? Are you getting sick? She tells me, no, I'm not sick. The rest of us are embarrassed. <laughs> I just don't see the reason to waste energy on the fear of man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a waste of energy. I'm too old. I need the energy. Holy Ghost. Shakaraba, shataba, katalaba. I will worship. Say it. I will praise his name forever. For his loving kindness. I will praise him. Because he's worthy. Shalakataba. I just wish you could have seen our enemies getting saved. I wish you could have seen them eating. I wish you could have seen how blessed we were that they got saved. We were relieved. <sighs> because now in the woods we have people protect us now. Because they can't quit. But if they try to quit, the rest of the cartel will turn on them and kill them. Do you understand? Say yes, but you really don't. You really don't understand. Holy Ghost. <laughs> Because you believe the fantasy that everything's going to be all right. The only reason it's going to be all right is because Jesus is king. Amen. Holy Ghost. Now, let me share one more verse or two or something. Uh, where are we? Do y'all remember what verse? Was it two? We didn't make it past two. Okay, we'll do three. In that day, in the day when I called, I answered, you, you answered me. Say, thank you, God, for answering me. It says, you strengthened me with strength. Say it. I want strength. I want strength from the Holy Ghost. I want strength. I want might. Say it. I want inflexibility to temptation. Say it. I want my inner man recharged with the Holy Ghost and fire in Jesus' name. Verse uh, something. Um, let's do five. Because I'm after another verse, so I'm going to hurry through these next two. So. <laughs> Yes, they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. Say it. I will sing. Say it. I will sing. It says, and joyfully celebrate. Say it. Celebrate. His mighty acts. His mighty acts. You, you heard since I've been up here, I'm telling you one powerful thing after the next. After the next. They're endless. Literally. I keep myself in trouble. Then having to have the angels of God to come deliver me. I really like my job because it's open-ended. He, I have an open ticket. He lets me do whatever I want to, just about. 
And he, has, he comes and takes care of us because he likes to do mighty acts for the sons of God. Shalakaba. And I am a son of God. I don't know if I told you that, but you need to know that. You've actually seen one now. Yes, they shall sing of the ways of the Lord and joyfully celebrate his mighty acts. For great is the glory. Say it. Great is the glory. Glory of God come to us. Greatness of God come to us. Mighty acts of the Lord come to us. In Jesus' name. For though, verse 6, for though the Lord is high, yet he has respect to the lowly. Tell him thank you. Thank you. Because that's us. We are the lowly. We are the humble. We are the contrite spirits. We are the brokenhearted. We are the ones on our face, on the carpet, calling on his mercy, calling on his glory, calling on his mighty acts continually. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Say it. Yes, that's me. Say it. You just described me. Say it. In Jesus' name. <laughs> but the proud and the haughty, he knows and recognizes only at a distance. So say this with me. Say pride. pride. Out of my life. Out of my life. Haughtiness. Haughtiness. Be gone from my home. In Jesus' name. I walk. Say it. In humility, in humility, in lowliness of spirit, in lowliness of spirit. So, that so that God can be lifted up, and the mighty acts of the Lord can be done, and the, of the, and the glory of God can come, in Jesus, in Jesus' name. The verse I want is verse 7, you ready? Though I walk in the midst of trouble, see that's me. But but I really know that the most of you sitting in this room, you skirt trouble. If you can see it, if you can foresee it, you you do a detour. Well, there's a, there's one percent of humanity that I'm part of that when we see trouble, we go to trouble. That's what sons of God do. Say it. I'm a son of God. Say it. I am a son of God. Say it. In Jesus' name. And though I walk in the midst of trouble, what's the next phrase say? Read it to me, someone. What does it say? You make me alive. You revive me. See, what I want while I'm here with you is God to revive us. Do you understand I'm on fire? Things are good for me. Say it. But I want more. Say it. I want more reviving. I want my spirit awakened. Wake me up, Holy Ghost. Wake the mighty acts of God up in me. Say it. Wake the glory of God up in me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hope. Hoppy. 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 Is that right? Hoppy. Okay. I'm David. Hoppy. Throw up that crutch fella, will you? Okay. I want you to look up here on the thing. I want you to look at this. This is up high in the Himalayas. Right outside the church building where I'm standing in there where we took this picture. Right outside to, the, to the, his right, out that window, is the second, it's K2, the second highest mountain in the world. Do you understand? We're right under it, doing church, right on the Nepal border, right on the Chinese border. It's India. 
And I told them, I don't want to just go do a conference. I don't like just doing a conference. I want to make a difference in the area when I go somewhere. And so they brought me. It took us two days to get to this military air base. And then we drove five hours in a four-wheel drive. We spent the night and the third day, six hours up to this mountain here. Put him back up there, Mr. Hoffy. Was that right? Hoffy. 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 Huh? Oh, it's a K? Gee, but it's back in the back. Hoffy. Hoffy. Is that right? Hoffy. Hoffy. Is that all right? Hoffy. I'm having trouble with it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm David. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Mr. G. I can get that. <laughs> I'll remember that. Thank you, Mom. You're smart, aren't you? <laughs> some of y'all, some of y'all ain't laughed this much ever. Good for you, actually. It heals you when you laugh. <laughs> but I want you to see, they brought that this place was so packed, there was, you couldn't move. There were so many people uh, come out of the mountains in the woods. And uh, uh, these are Nepalese people. They're, they're in, we're in India, but they're Nepali people. And... Um, um, <sighs> Golly, they brought so many sick and, oh my goodness, uh, cripples and blind and deaf. And, and uh, we're sitting there. So I didn't know what to do because I couldn't get to them. So I got down on my hands and knees and, and crawled through the legs and got over to the cripples and prayed, held them and kissed them and did all that stuff. And then they let me talk. And I talked a few minutes and some of the other guys talked as well. All of a sudden, this fella... Mr. G. <laughs> oh. Okay. All of a sudden, this fella who's been crippled, they hadn't walked in three years, they brought this guy in, just all of a sudden, he just, he just, we're watching, he just stands up and lifts up his crutches and starts walking. <laughs> there he is. The, the, this is what I'm talking about. See, this is what we need. Say it. I need that. I need that. This man's life was done. You see how young, wait a minute, Mr. G. Okay. You see, you see he's not that old, right? And uh, give me a minute, Mr. G, will you? And so... It's fun to be free, you understand? But boy, it gets you in trouble sometimes. And this fellow, but his life was over. There's no hope for him. He lives in a village. There's no, there's no, there's no resources coming. And God sends us. Do, do you see who you are? You are the confessor. You are the worshiper. You are the praiser. You're the one that gets to go. And when you get there, this broken piece of humanity that is not going to be okay, he's going to end up starving to death more than likely. But now, because you walk in there, it's not you at all. It's the one you're praising. It's not you, but he likes you because you worship him. So he sends help with you. These angels, these powers, this fire, this glory, these mighty acts accompany us because of the worship. Now, I want you to look at this phrase right here. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. Do you understand that's a promise? And I know what some of you in here are facing, and it's very real. But you look at me. Ha! Jesus is king. 
you will be revived. I don't believe what, I, I know it's real. I, I know it to be real. Ha! Jesus is king. You will be revived. You will be equipped. You will be made alive anew, afresh. You will be revived. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You should have seen the miracle flowing. Uh, the, the, I, the, it was, you can do it, Mr. G. You can bail it now. It's all right. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, we went to a service the very next day. It was in a town. It wasn't up in the mountains as far. And it was, I couldn't even move. You, there was no getting down and praying for the people. It, it wasn't happening. It was just too many people. And yet they kept fighting and bringing in demon-possessed, blind and crippled and just, just wow. And, and all around us. And I'm up there talking and I told the team, you guys, I don't know what you're going to do, but you got to get out there. And they go out and take different sections of the place and trying to work with the people and to, because they're, pull, they're ripping the clothes off of us. See, when you're the confessor, you're the one that confesses. You're the one that worships. You're the one that praises. People notice you different because you've been revived. It's not you. It's what revives you that they see. Because we look normal. You know, you throw all of us in one of these malls around here that nobody would ever see us until we're revived. And then we don't fit anymore. We're, we're, we're every, everybody's looking at us. And I tell my wife every day of my life, I tell her, what do you think they're looking at? She says, you know what they're looking at. Now, come on. <laughs> it's Jesus. It's Jesus. I like it. Do you hear me? I like it. I like my life. I like the confession life. I like the worship life, the praise life. Many of you, are, you live in fear of other people's opinion of you. Put the na na Something's wrong with you, man. People think something's wrong with me. I'm all right. Something's wrong with you, man. Shalakaba. Jesus. Jesus. And right in front of me, I'm standing up on that platform, and right in front of me, this blind guy stands up, and, and, and he, he's solid white right here. All of a sudden, pupils formed in his eyes, and he started walking and walked up on the platform with me. I don't know. I don't know. God, God didn't ask for my permission. He forgot. <laughs> I'm serious. It's, we have a problem. God thinks he's in charge. <laughs> We're going to have to send him one of them memo things. Oh, oh, what's that? Dude, you forgot we're in charge, God. You need to back it down a little bit. Let's see the agua, por favor. Holy. 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 What if you the guy with no hope and you stuck in a village somewhere and they have to carry you for miles and miles and they stick you in a pile of stinking rotten flesh people. Incurables. And then this white guy gets down on his hands and knees and goes down through there kissing everybody. Hugging everybody. That is not their custom. It's not my custom. My custom is to oil my gun. That's my custom. But God's custom is compassion. God's custom is praise. God's custom is worship. Do you understand? Do you understand? And one of, the, one of the ladies sitting there, this lady, uh, she's crippled, in both legs. And she saw the blind man. 
She's looking at the blind man. And she saw him get his eyesight. All of a sudden, she starts struggling to, to, to get up. She, she got up to one of the steps. And her legs are not functioning. And she's coming up them steps. And I'm watching her. The next thing you know, one of the legs starts moving. And then another one. And then the lady stands up. And now you got the crippled lady standing beside the blind guy. And both of them are healed. It's awesome, huh? <laughs> I want you to look at verse 8 and then I'm going to, well, I'm getting bored with all this talking, so we'll do something else. I've either convinced you or I haven't. If I haven't, get on out of here and make room for the ones that want it. The ones that want it, these unbelievers will be gone soon enough and we can have fun. You, I apologize to you, I'm not that intimidated guy. I'm right. And it gives you some courage when you're right. Jesus is king. Look at that verse eight. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Say it. See, see, I may not be that interested. I might miss it somehow. I want to help you. I do. That's what I do for a living, knucklehead. I help people. But I might miss it. God won't miss it. Jesus loves you. He will perfect that which concerns you. Say it. I need some perfection, Holy Ghost. It'd be great if you'd step on in right now and work fine. <laughs> Help me. Help me, Holy Ghost. I seem to be off the trail somehow. Something distracted me and I got whacked somehow. Help me, Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. So will you please stand? But if you do go to Africa, don't mess with the monkeys. They are devils. <laughs> I hate the monkeys. God, them things are evil. <laughs> Holy Ghost, you good? Everything all right? Okay. Okay.